Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video we're going to be talking about a subject that's a little bit controversial. In today's episode we're going to be talking about something that they've made legal in almost all 50 states. I would like to get you guys opinion. It's going to take a little bit to make this video. Grab yourself a cup of coffee and let's enjoy the morning. Guys, we're into like day three of archery season here in Deep East Texas and there's nothing that excites me more than knowing that it's archery season. That's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about if you guys are on social media at all. I know that there's an abundance of videos going around right now. There's abundance of comments going around right now. And it's talking about the crossbow hunters in specific. So just a little bit more history about me. I started shooting a recurve when I was 12 years old. It was a hand-me-down recurve. It used to be my grandfather's. He kind of aged out, got to the point where he couldn't shoot. Now there was a couple of problems. I was 12, 13 years old. This bow was a 50 pound recurve. Guys, that was a lot, but that's how I learned to shoot. And by the end of the first summer, I got to where I could actually hold it full draw for a little bit, and I was shooting tennis balls. During this time, I was getting excited, and I really, really, really wanted to go archery hunting bad. My grandpa didn't hunt anymore, and my dad had only been twice growing up. So he didn't know anything about bow hunting. I didn't know anything about bow hunting. And we're gonna talk a little bit about technology right now as well. So the year of Christmas, when I turned 13, my dad bought me a Ben Pearson compound bow. Guys, that was the first time I'd ever draw, drew back a bow and felt what let off was. The bow again, I wanna say it was set up at 50 pounds, draw weight and then getting to experience what 20, it was 50% let off. So when you got it at full draw, you were holding 25 pounds. Guys, I'm here to tell you when I was 13 years old, that technology just kind of blew my mind. I thought it was amazing technology. And being a kid who grew up playing with a Commodore 64 back then, we're talking about in the 80s, guys, that was top of the line. They hadn't even come out with the Commodore 128 yet. And if you don't know anything about that, that just tells me that you're younger than me. But my point is, is I've always enjoyed technology and I've always enjoyed nature. And it could be any form, whether I was hunting, fishing, camping, doing photography. Guys, I was running around in the, in the field as a kid with a camera in my teenage years trying to be like oh what was the guys that was doing videos back then guys you you know the ones i'm talking about they started out as hunters didn't enjoy the hunt but they loved the wildlife and they kept doing photography and they actually had a show on pbs back when i was a kid but either way the technology was advancing and people compound bows were becoming more and more common again we're talking about way pre-internet days back then there was no there was just simply no internet. If you wanted to learn about bow hunting and your dad didn't know and you didn't have an uncle or somebody that could teach you anything about deer hunting, you basically had a handful of choices. You had Bow Hunter Magazine, you had a couple of videos that you could go to the video store and rent videos. And to be honest with you, that's where I learned about the Moon Guide and I've been hunting with it ever since. And this was also during the time frame. And I'll tell you this, Bow Hunter Magazine is where we got a lot of inspiration. Again, I talked my dad into, we're gonna start bow hunting together. And, and it, was, it was something that was always truly near and dear and special to me, especially when you're in that eighth, ninth grade in school my dad would check me out of school that first week of October when opening season when when deer season opened and it was back in Oklahoma it opened October 1st ran through January 15th and one of the great things about it opening up early if if you were like my dad and you had a young boy that was wanting to learn how to bow hunt you could go out there and the temperatures weren't nearly as extreme as what you was going to see during rifle season when it can be snowing, blizzards, whatever else that can happen in Oklahoma during November. So I had my little Ben Pearson compound bow and I was shooting that thing every day, guys. And even back then, if, if I was so passionate about archery and bow hunting and shooting my bow, I shot it every day after school. I'd run home, I'd get off the bus, run home, grab my bow, go out in the backyard, and I spent a great deal of time shooting nothing but hay bales and tennis balls. Because I do think it's important to share the sport and share the passion. I had five buddies that I run around with in the neighborhood that I grew up in. 
By the time we graduated high school, three of my buddies were bow hunters as well. They went with me and my dad a couple of times, and it was fun to kind of teach others and share with others. But I'm going to tell you this, it took me and my dad seven years, seven years of hunting before we ever took our first deer. Guys, let that sink in for a little bit. You didn't have internet. We didn't know what the rut was. All we had was a few magazines and nobody to teach us, and we were learning the hard, hard way, which was the school of hard knocks, on how to hunt deer with one of the toughest forms to harvest a deer, which is archery season, which is why it was so long, and still is so long in Oklahoma. And that's kind of the background and the history of me, but I want to continue on as we talk about a few things and how technology has changed. And we're going to be talking about technology from bows to crossbows to social media and social media influencers. I hope by now you kind of have a good glimpse into my history and where I started out. And we're talking 40 years ago, I started out shooting a bow and me and my dad took our first bow hunting trip together on public property because we didn't have a big ranch, we didn't have a big farm. In fact, my dad was broke like your average dad was back in those days. That's where we learned how to make our own gear. We made our own tree stands, we made our own little deer blinds out in the woods. Anything that we were gonna hunt with, aside from our bows, we made ourselves. Up and to including making my own arrows, because I could buy those game getter shafts, some feathers and some Loctite and some fletching glue. We'd cut them old sh aluminum shafts down with one of those uh, gas pipe cutting tools, you know, kind of you spin it around the arrow shaft until it finally cuts through. Guys, those were the days and, and they bring back fond memories and it's something that I'll always cherish. But as we continue talking about technology, we're, I'm gonna, we're gonna fast forward. Okay, so fast forward several years and I was now shooting a PSE Fireflight 3D. And I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember, but back then if they had everybody in the archery industry was chasing that 300 foot per second. They was coming out with overdraws to where you could shoot a shorter shaft. And guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, as the technology increased and you were shooting overdraws with these lighter shafts, that's where a lot of people started blowing up their bows because they were shooting shafts too light. And then the other problem that people were starting to figure out was these short light shafts, although they may fly fast, they'll make it to the target as having penetration issues, and then that led to lost deer. It was all a big kind of circle of evolution from chasing speed and technology. In 1985, Knight Rifles came out with an inline black powder rifle that actually had rifling in the barrel. Yes, you heard me right, 1985. Night Rifles came out with an inline black powder rifle that had rifling in the barrel. What did that mean? Well, for any of you guys that were shooting the traditional black powder rifles, let's just use the Hawkins Thompson Center Hawkins 50 caliber. That thing would shoot great one out of five shots. There was many a time when me and my dad would be out there sighting in our rifles and similar to the backdrop that you're seeing here, we've got Regular stockade fence is what we call it back in Oklahoma, but it's your six by eight fence panel. We'd be sighting in those black powder rifles at 50 yards. There'd be times you would shoot and your bullet would not even hit that six by eight. So what happened when night rifles came about? And the reason we're talking about that is we're talking about technology and hunters and the way that things have changed. Black Knight got it to where you could actually shoot and sight in your black powder rifle at 100 yards. Guys, this was huge. Think about it. You had a Thompson 50 caliber that at 50 yards, you may miss a six by eight panel. Knight Rifles come along in 1985 and they've invented an inline black powder rifle that's still legal in all 50 states, as far as I know, to use during primitive, or what would they call it, yeah, black powder season. We're just gonna stick with something, a term simple that we can all understand. The technology increased to the point that I actually, one year during black powder, I actually harvested an animal that was 200 yards away. I was laying prone in a wheat field. The wheat was coming up only about that tall. I was laying prone and I harvested a deer 200 yards away with a black powder rifle. 
that was a phenomenal increase in your success rate when you think about going from the old school Thompson Center 50 caliber black powder rifle to a rifle that's still considered a black powder that I made a 200 yard shot. Guys, I'm not a professional shooter. So I, we're talking about average Joe here. So you may be asking yourself, what does black powder rifle have to do with crossbows? Let's keep with this deep dive into technology. Okay, so let's fast forward a couple more years and we're gonna go to the year 1992. Anybody know what happened in 1992? That's okay, I'm gonna tell you. In 1992, there was a revolution in archery as we knew it at the time. Matthews came out with a solo cam bow that actually changed the entire world of archery, in my opinion. Now again, this is my opinion, but here we go, and let's just bear with me. We had PSC, we had every big archery brand that you could think of. Everybody was chasing that 300 feet per second speed. And I do want to say this, because I think it's actually kind of comical. 20 years past that, they're still chasing the 200 or the 300 feet per second. And nobody that I know of is making a bow yet that'll shoot 300 feet per second with a hunting shaft. Yeah, everybody out there is advertising that they, their bow can shoot 340, 345, whatever. Um, you go ahead and you load that thing up with a 450 grain arrow combo, your arrow and your, you, you know what a, the total arrow weight is, 450, and we're still not busting that 300 feet per second, and I think that's kind of funny. Now, let's fast forward to the year 2010. In Oklahoma, Brad Henry, who was the governor of Oklahoma at the time, signed the bill, and it was House Bill, House Bill 1594. So in July of 2010, it made it legal for people to use crossbows. Previous to this house bill, the only people that could use crossbows was anybody over the age of 60 and or had a permanent disability. And when I say permanent disability, if, if you was at work and you threw your shoulder out and you were gonna heal up and you were gonna recover, you were not allowed to hunt with a crossbow legally. So those are things to keep in mind as we continue this conversation. Next, we're gonna talk about people and how the people have changed. So for us to have a better understanding of how the people have changed over the years since I started hunting as the age of 13, we're gonna go back to when I was a kid, age of 13, because kids are no longer different today than they were when I was a kid 40 years ago. 40 years ago, Kids did what they were allowed to do. So it didn't take long for my five buddies and I to figure out who had the most lenient parents. You wanna know where we all stayed on Friday nights? We'd stay over at Sean's house because his dad didn't give two poops what we did. And when I say his dad didn't give two poops what we did, I mean it. Guys, seriously, we'd go over to Sean's house, all five of us boys, we all ran around together since we could ride bicycles. We'd stay the night at Sean's house. Guys, we would roam the entire city of Yukon. We'd roam around all night. We did, we did all the stupid things that you could do or you could think of as a little boy running around all hours of the night in a small country town. We'd dip a little snuff, smoke a few cigarettes, maybe even TP somebody's tree in their front yard. And granted, the neighborhood was kind of new, so the trees in the neighborhood were only 10 or 12 foot tall, <laughs> and the wind was always blowing in Oklahoma. So there's a really good chance that any of the toilet paper you threw in your neighbor kid's tree, it wasn't gonna be there in the morning anyways. But we were just boys, we were stupid, and we were having fun, and we did what we were allowed to do that wasn't illegal, immoral, or unethical. Well, those last three might be a stretch when you start talking about smoking, dipping, and TP in somebody's house. But either way, we weren't breaking any laws to speak of. We were just being boys. Not only was Oklahoma, but almost every other of the 50 states made crossbows legal. Why is that important to this topic, and why does being a kid have anything to do with this topic? My point is this. If you're allowed to do something and it's not illegal, people are going to do it, period. Now granted, I told you we may be in a stretch smoking and dipping, maybe even toilet papering. Those were a stretch on whether they were legal or not. 
But the point is, there was no curfew violation, so we weren't breaking any curfew laws back then. So again, as we continue this discussion on crossbows, I want to make this point. Number one, I'm a crossbow owner, have been. And I'm going to tell you this, guys, I've truly enjoyed hunting with a crossbow. I'm also going to back up and tell you I've been a Matthews owner for a long time. I don't really remember the name of the first Matthews bow that I bought, but I still have in my possession the Matthews Switchback which is the second Matthews bow that I bought as a young man. And guys, this has got to be uh, 2005, I believe, is when they came out with the switchback. And it's still, if you look online, they're going to say it's one of the best bows that ever came out. But my point is this. When I got my crossbow, I went out, bow hunted that first year. It's a 10-point crossbow. Not that the brand even matters, but it's a 10-point. I got a deer right off the bat, and it was a 40-yard shot. It was ethical, and it was a great way to break in a brand new crossbow. The very next year, the only time that I hunted with that crossbow was during either black powder season or rifle season. Here's where we're going to start talking about choices that we make as bow hunters. I don't remember what year it was, but let's just safely say it was probably 15 years ago. I quit hunting with a gun, period. I quit hunting with black powder and I quit hunting with rifle during rifle season. And I've already told you for a couple of years I hunted with a crossbow during black powder and rifle because in Oklahoma you can always hunt with a, a weapon step down. You just can't step up. I.e. you can't hunt with a rifle during black powder but you can hunt with a bow. Same thing during rifle season. You can hunt with a black powder or a bow or a rifle. You can always step down. But that was a choice that I made to decide. When I made the decision that I'm no longer going to hunt with a rifle, that was a choice that I made, and I loved shooting my bow. And I'm going to go on and tell you this. There was numerous years where I hunted with my Matthews, and I limited out in the state of Oklahoma. Back then, the limit was total of five deer. You could get three does and two bucks. I know they've changed it now, and it's a little bit different. I think maybe you can get six. But here nor there, the choice that I made to hunt with my Matthews bow during black powder and rifle was a choice I made. The choice I made to quit hunting with my crossbow because I loved shooting my Matthews so much was a choice I made. I think it's funny that when Black Knight came out with their inline rifle, black powder rifles, you didn't hear anybody complaining about how they were cheating by using an inline rifle that instead of a 90% accuracy rate at 50 yards, you got a 90% accuracy rate at 200 yards. Why is it nobody ever complained about that? That brings me up to another point I want to make about the crossbow hunters. I want to talk about the crossbow hunters and technology. We're going to briefly talk about the internet, social media, and a decision that you may have made when you decided that all you wanted to do was trad hunting. Now I want to talk about a decision that I made also. In 2015, I decided to start doing trad hunting. I'm going to be real clear with you and honest as to why I made this choice. The number one reason that I made the choice to become a trad hunter in the state of Oklahoma in 2015 was this. In Oklahoma, they have a draw hunt only at a old army place and it's called McAllister. If you guys are from Oklahoma you know exactly what I'm talking about. But at McAllister it's a draw and hunt and you can only use either a recurve or a longbow and it cannot have anything attached to it. No markings on it or anything. I think you might be able to get by with camo limb covers but no sight, no peep sight, no nothing. I, I don't even think you can have a quiver attached to your bow. That's how strict they are. But for me, to make it worth my while before I even put in for it, I wanted to make sure that number one, I could shoot accurately. I wanted to get a couple of uh, deer harvested with the bow. That way I'd have more confidence if I did get lucky and get drawn in. That was a choice that I made. So during these three or four or five years where I hunted initially with my trad bow, that's all I hunted with. I hunted with my trad bow. Uh, first year, I think I scratched a zero. Next year, I got one. The next year, I think I got nothing. The next year, I got two. Um, and then ultimately, over the last, I believe it's seven years now, whatever that adds up to be, all I've hunted with was a trad bow. I've got to tell you this, guys. When I decided to go hunting with a trad bow during black powder season, during rifle season, 
with a trad bow. That was a choice that I made. Here's where it gets interesting, and I would like to hear your feedback and what your thoughts are. Every year as we start approaching or knocking on the door of archery season, there's a ton of videos where they're making fun of the guys that are shooting crossbows. And I think it's interesting. Like I said, when Black Knight came out with a rifled black powder rifle that made you accurate up to 200 yards, nobody's ever said a word about that. But now you have a state, and let's just go ahead and say that I believe that crossbows are legal in all 50 states. You see nothing but a bunch of videos of people making fun of crossbow hunters. I find it interesting. My next question for all the people who are making fun of the crossbow hunters, do you hunt with a black powder rifle? And do you hunt with a rifle during rifle season? I've got another fun story to tell you about a buddy of mine. His name is Johnny. Johnny is a die-hard trad bow hunter. He started out like I did as a kid with a hand-me-down recurve. Johnny has never hunted with a rifle. He's never hunted with a black powder. And there's been many years where Johnny has tagged out and limited with his recurve. And he's, I guess what you would call today, a die-hard Black Widow fan. Johnny's never been a member of any kind of uh, archery association like PBA or any of those that you hear about or read about. He does subscribe to the traditional Bow Hunter magazine, which is an awesome magazine, by the way. And if you haven't subscribed to him, I'd encourage you to look at the link down below. No, they're not an affiliate mine. No, they don't even know who I am. But my point is this, Johnny is one of the best guys you'll ever meet in your life. Johnny will go out of his way to help you. And he doesn't care if you got a compound bow in your hand or a, or a crossbow. Johnny made the choice that he wanted to be a traditional hunter. When I was younger and the technology craze was there and everybody was chasing that 300 feet per second, Johnny was out there shooting his recurve every single day. Every single day, guys. That was a choice that he made and a choice that he was so happy and proud of. And Johnny has some amazing trophies. And I'm gonna go on to say this. If you guys have done the push, which came out in 2016, and you've switched over to trad bows, congratulations, and I wanna say this. If you've tagged anything with a trad bow, it's a trophy. Guys, I've got a, a deer hide that I've had tanned that I took, my first deer that I took with an old school stick bow. If you go back and watch some of our old videos, we've done a review on the bear bow, we've, and, and then I can't lie, my favorite longbow ever is Al Camry longbow. I absolutely love it. But when I chose to become a traditional bow hunter, I did it for my own reasons, and it was something that I enjoyed. So as we wrap this conversation up, again, what I wanna say is number one, Every, just like I mentioned, when I was a kid, I did what I was able to do and allowed to get away with. People over the years have not changed. The people who are hunting legally are still hunting legally. The ones that were breaking the law when I was a kid. And when I say breaking the law, I'm not talking about the kid that's out there teepee in somebody's house. I'm talking about the guy that would shoot a deer with a rifle and poke an arrow through it. And I don't know if it was rumor or not, but I know when I was a kid growing up, you'd hear that they had some sort of spray. The game rangers could spray the hide of your animal, and if it detected any kind of lead or, or powder from your bullet, they would be able to know that you didn't shoot it with a bow and then, or shoot it with a gun and then poke an arrow through it and say that you shot it with your bow. That, was that true? I have no idea. I also heard rumors when I was a kid about the guys who would hide crossbows out on the field, maybe even on public land. They'd go out there two weeks before scouting for deer, hide a crossbow, and then sneak off out in the woods with their bow to and from the truck, but be actually hunting in their ground blind that they had made with a crossbow. Was it true or not? I have no idea. But what I'm saying is this. They made it legal for people to use crossbows. And people have always, since Adam and Eve, done what they were able to do and get away with legally to the point of sinning, which is, that's a whole nother topic that I'd love to talk to you guys about if any of you want to hear more about that. But at the end of the day, I'm actually tired of reading all the comments about crossbow this, crossbow that, crossbow this, crossbow that. And I would like your opinion. Comment down below if you're one of the people who are on the anti-crossbow wagon. Do you hunt with a rifle or a black powder? If so, 
what's the difference? You're still hunting legally. And what about the guy who doesn't have very much time to hunt? What about the guy who's working two jobs and maybe can't practice every day? And in his mind, it's more ethical for him to shoot a crossbow. What about that guy? Guys, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, so I think it's worth mentioning in the video as well, but this was probably back in the 90s. There was a group of us that were hunting at public land. I'll tell you, we were at Canton Lake. Canton Lake has a phenomenal public hunting area, has a great archery hunting access and a place to hunt. But I'm gonna tell you this, there was a guy, and we're talking in the 90s, so it was back when you had to have the permanent disability permit from the state to even hunt with a crossbow. There was a guy that came into camp, none of us had ever met him before, and I would guess that he was probably 35 or 40 years old, and he looked healthy as an ox, looked healthier than any of us. I mean, he looked like he could bench press 300 pounds. But here's the thing, not every disability that a person has is visible, especially when you see him walking out of the woods. This guy, 35 years old, had had four open heart surgeries, now, we're talking about the 90s. Back then, that's when they didn't have the technology that they do in the medical industry today. So that meant that they had cracked his chest open and pulled his ribs apart four different times, open heart surgery. And bless his heart, I don't know what his name is, I don't remember that, but I'll never forget him telling us that. I hope that he's still alive. I hope that he's still out hunting with his crossbow. And don't be quick to judge people especially if you don't know their story. But he felt obligated to let us know why he was carrying a crossbow. That was back in the 90s, and it, it touched my heart. And I hope it's something that you can think about as well. What about the guy that's on a fixed income? Maybe he doesn't have a disability, but he's on a fixed income, and he needs the supplemental meat. I know there's hunters sharing the harvest programs in a lot of different states. and. Ask yourself this, say that something bad happened, you lost your job, okay? So bear with me, something bad happened, you lost your job. You're trying to feed your family. Would you go out with a crossbow because it was legal and you needed the meat? I'm not talking about the guys that are breaking the law, that go into grocery stores and steal steaks. I'm talking about the guy that wants to stay legal. I'm talking about the guy who maybe can't ask for help. Guys, if any of you guys have ever struggled with something in your life and you struggled with asking somebody for help, you know what I'm talking about. Again, when we go back and we're talking about the archer's mindset over the years since I was a little boy, archers have always been kind-hearted people who were caring who wanted to help others. How many people in the PBA have gone out of their way to help another person get started in archery? Raise your hand. How many of you have never been involved with any kind of archery organization have gone out of your way to help another friend learn how to hunt? Raise your hand. I think before we jump on the bandwagon and what sparked this entire video was last night on, on Facebook, and I'm not gonna say what group it was, but there was a guy talking about he went hunting. He went out and it was opening weekend for bow season and as he's leaving the woods, he's coming out, he's carrying a primitive bow, either a recurve or a longbow, I'm not sure which. But a guy that's walking beside him and walking out of the woods at the same time is carrying a crossbow. And in their state, their archery season went from one month down to two weeks and they started having a conversation. Why do you think that is? Well, the guy that was carrying the longbow or the recurve said, it's because of guys like you. Guys like you who are out here tagging deer with a crossbow, the numbers and the success rate has doubled, similar to the black powder we've already mentioned in the video earlier with the guys who are hunting with crossbows. My question is, instead of making that guy feel bad, wouldn't it be more interesting to talk to the guy, try to figure out what his background is, because who knows, maybe he just lost his job. Maybe he's trying to feed his family. Maybe he doesn't want to ask somebody for help. 
And all I'm asking at the end of the day, guys, is if you're going to get online and be one of these keyboard warriors, try to put yourself in the other guy's shoes and ask yourself, why is he hunting with a crossbow? This year is no different for me. I've got another friend that I'm taking hunting with me. And he's, he's bow hunted in the past, but he's not bow hunted like I do. And not that anything I'm doing is totally different or unique by any means, because I've only been hunting for 40 years and there's a lot of things I still have to learn yet, guys. But I want to say this, the guy's 76 years old. He's hunting with a crossbow and he's been online and read enough comments that he basically tried to justify his reason why he's carrying a crossbow to me. And number one, I don't care, brother. I think at the end of the day, we all need to be out in the woods appreciating the peace and joy and beauty that God has given us. I have never felt closer in my life to God than when I'm out in the woods. And what I'm trying to ultimately say in this video is this, guys, bow hunters have changed over the years, people have not. Again, when I was a kid learning, we, didn't, we had limited resources, but look how many people on YouTube are trying to help you learn how to bow hunt. Look how many people that you can join the different archery groups want to teach you how to bow hunt. And I don't think attitude has a place in bow hunting. And I think it's interesting over the years how you made a choice to trad hunt shouldn't affect me. That's your choice. I made the choice to try to hunt. And I've never looked down on somebody who was out there with a crossbow or looked down on somebody that was using a compound. I encourage everybody to get out there and enjoy the sport the best that they can, as legal as they can. And when the states have made the laws legal. Now then, I want to go a step further. If you guys are really, really adamant that you don't want to see crossbow hunters, Think about this, here in the state of Texas, where I'm at now, I believe there's three counties where crossbows are the same old school laws. You can only hunt with a crossbow in those three counties if you're over the age of whatever or you've got a permanent disability. If you're that concerned with the crossbows and the crossbow hunters and it's maybe affecting how long you're able to hunt out in the field, instead of making a guy feel bad for doing something that's legal, why don't you go and maybe try to see what you can do to get some of the public hunting land in your state to where it's bow only or trad bow only. The one I mentioned in McAllister in Oklahoma, it's drawing only and trad bow only. Guys, it can be done, but I don't think as hunters and as people and as people who care about other people that we should be making people feel bad for hunting legally. Again, that's just my opinion and I may be wrong. I'd love to hear your comments down below. Share this video with anybody that you think might get some maybe different insight about the crossbow hunters. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you're old like me and you've chased that speed demon like I did with technology. Um, guys, let me know what you think. And while we're talking about technology, the thing that I find interesting is the Compound bows that they're making today, which yeah, they're expensive. Some they're you're upwards of two thousand dollars to get a fully rigged quiver sight, peep, the whole shebang, and get out the door. You're looking at two grand for some of these top of the line bows. Guys, those bows are accurate for fifty and sixty yards for your average dude to shoot. I'm not talking about target skilled archers. I'm talking about your average dude is making 50 and 60 yard shots with those. Those are actually more accurate than some of the crossbows that they're putting out. Think about that. What's the difference? Why is that okay, but a crossbow's not? Anyhow, love to hear your feedback. I think it's awesome. And maybe you, maybe you got something out of this video, I don't know. And while we're talking about legal, I think it's pretty awesome that here in the state of Texas, they made marijuana illegal. And I'm only assuming that because every morning when I'm out here, my little archery range, I can smell pot being burned up because the dude next door is smoking pot. <laughs> I don't want to smell pot in the morning. But anyhow, in all seriousness, guys, I'd love to hear some feedback from you, what your thoughts are, why you let me know what your thoughts are. But again, think about this. I can tell you right now, Angie and I are on a fixed income. 
and we generally like to have two deer a year. If I get anything over two deer, I always spread it out and I share the harvest. But me and her can eat two deer a year and it helps offset our budget, our meal budget. And I'm not going to lie, guys, I'm switching back this year. I've mentioned it in another video. No, I'm not hunting with a crossbow this year, but I am going to be hunting with my old Matthews compound, which is like 20 years old. It doesn't have the technology, in my opinion, to be making 40 and 50 yard shots, but it definitely does a great job at 20 and 30 yards. And again, that's a choice that I've made. That's my choice. And I'm still going to Love my buddy Johnny that's hunting with his Black Widow recurve, and he's still gonna love me. Again, I've got another friend named Jesse. He's a trad hunter. But Jesse, as far as I know, he does do a little bit. He dabbles with black powder. I don't know about rifle or not, but those are things to consider, guys. And in conclusion, guys, and thanks for bearing with me, but here's my main point that I wanna make. When I started out archery, I hunted with my Ben Pearson compound bow that I got for Christmas. I was so proud of that thing at age 13. I want to tell you it was a choice that my father and I made to go out and try to harvest deer with a bow. That was a choice we made. I also want to say this, archers back then, and we're talking 40 years ago guys, they were all friendly. They all helped each other the best that they could. And if they were leaving, they might not even care and give you a tip of where to hunt tomorrow. I think in our core, in our heart and our soul, your average archer hunter wants to do everything that he can to help his brother archer person. But I think guys, we are failing in an area and one of them, the biggest division line I've ever seen since I've been bow hunting in over 40 years is this crossbow, conspiracy, whatever you wanna call it. But think about this, why is my friend who's 76 years old trying to justify to me why he's carrying a crossbow? You wanna know why? because he's reading all these comments on the different archery forums. He's seeing all these short videos on the different platforms. Name it, pick your poison. Guys, as archers, in our heart and our soul, we care about other archers and we want to help people. I believe with all my heart that we can all reach out and help people. Instead of being real quick to judge, why don't we try to find out a little bit more about this guy and let's find out if maybe he does need some help. Maybe that's why he's carrying a crossbow. Or maybe he's 76 years old. How many of you guys think you're gonna be able to climb up in a tree when you're 76, but he's feeling bad about going out and enjoying the sport? That's not fair, guys, and that's not right. Let's do better as the whole entire archery group and the entire archery community. Guys, I've loved this sport since I was 13, and we can do better. Again, I'm not criticizing anybody. Everybody's got their own opinion, and if you made the choice to be nothing but a trad hunter, that's your choice. Congratulations, I have too. But as life changes and economic times change, I don't think there's anything wrong with a guy that's hunting legally. And I think we can do a better job if you want to try to educate that person on how they can maybe be more successful with a bow by all means, reach out to them and see what you can't do to help them. But I don't think judging them or making them feel bad for hunting legal is the right way to go about it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Again, if you've watched this video all the way to the end, I wanna say thank you, and I'd love to hear from you. What is your thoughts on this? Because I don't think it's right to make somebody feel bad who's hunting legally. Again, we appreciate your likes, comments. If you wanna learn more about archery, consider subscribing. And until the next week's video comes out, be sure to check out one of our playlists up above. We'll put a link up there to some of our archery playlists. And I hope to see each and every one of you out in the field this year, whether you're public hunting here in Texas or public hunting back in Oklahoma. I hope you all have a blessed week. And let's get outside and make something happen.